What's up YouTube? Have you, like me, been wondering what to replace Lightroom with? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator, and today we're talking about what we can use to replace Lightroom. You know, we found a lot of good apps to replace other things in Adobe's Creative Cloud. For Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, we've been able to replace those with the Affinity programs. For all of the video stuff, Premiere, Audition, and After Effects, we've been able to replace that with DaVinci Resolve. But where we've really struggled is to find a replacement for Lightroom, something that can really help us to process a lot of raw photos and be able to move through that workflow quickly and efficiently and with really good results. Lightroom has kind of been king of this area. And there's a lot of different apps out there that claim to be able to replace Lightroom, but I haven't really felt like any of them could, or they come in at a subscription cost that's just as high as Lightroom, and so it just makes more sense to stay with Lightroom. Now, some people use Lightroom for all of their photo organization as well. I don't do that. I do all of my photo organization just in hard drives, and so I'm not really worried about the organization aspects of Lightroom, which may be important to you. But for me, it's really been a struggle to come up with something that is as good and as easy to use as Lightroom and at an affordable cost, which is kind of the whole point of leaving Lightroom behind. And you know, one of the things that makes it more difficult to leave Lightroom is that the cost is not that high. If you do the photography bundle, that's just $10 a month and you get Lightroom and Photoshop. And so that's kind of a tricky spot to be in, but I just didn't want to maintain an Adobe subscription. You know, it makes me feel kind of weird to do that. They are the industry apps and occasionally I still need to teach them, but I don't really want to maintain a license with Adobe because I don't like Adobe. I don't like their practices. I don't like the direction the company's headed. And so I would really prefer to do something else. And I think if I were doing professional photo work right now, I would probably just keep paying the $10 a month to keep Lightroom around in the photography plan because that would make sense from a business standpoint. But you know, with having moved recently and started a new job and having a lot of different projects going on, I'm just not doing any professional photo work. So it didn't make sense for me to keep paying the money. So I haven't needed to edit a really big batch of photos in a while and just recently I did and so I was like, well, what should I do? And for the first batch of photos, I tried to go back to Darkroom, but you know, Darkroom, which I purchased early on and so I had a perpetual license to it before they made a subscription model, which made me kind of upset. So I tried to go back and use the license that I had. The problem is a lot of their new features, really important things like masks that I'm used to using in Lightroom weren't available when using Darkroom on my license and I would have had to up to the subscription model or to the new single purchase price. I didn't really want to do that. I've never loved Darkroom's engine. I like their interface, but their engine for really adjusting the colors and particularly the highlights and shadows in a photo has never been very good in my opinion. And so I didn't really want to go back to Darkroom, but I edited some photos that way. And then I was like, well, maybe I'll go back and try Pixelmator Photo, which has changed its name to Photomator. I tried this several years ago and I purchased it. I think it was like five or 10 bucks back then. And so I have a full license to it on the iPad and iPhone. There was no Mac app back then. And so I thought I'd go back there because my license is still good and they gave me all the features. And so I can do things like masks. I can't use the Mac app with my license. I would have to purchase it. I think the single purchase is $99. They do have a subscription plan, which I don't know why anybody would do because you can purchase it for $99, which is kind of a steal for a raw photo editor that really works. So I wanted to see how it was. So I've been editing these on my iPad and Gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. It works really well. So the engine is really good. It has a lot of the machine learning features there to kind of aid you and help you if you need that. I don't particularly like to use those. I like to really be hands on with my photo editing, but it has these features like masks that are almost as good as Lightroom really in selecting a subject or a background or a sky. So making that masking process pretty easy using that machine learning, that's really helpful to me. And because it's got that, I was like, okay, I can do this. And I like the way the engine works quite a bit. It's good at lowering those highlights, raising those shadows, being able to add plenty of contrast. It's got most of the features that you would need. And particularly if you're comparing this to Lightroom CC, kind of the dumbed down version of Lightroom, Photomator performs really quite well. Compare it to Lightroom Classic, it's still not quite there, but considering the price difference, I think it's probably worth it. So again, for me, I paid five or 10 bucks for this years ago and I'm still able to keep using it. For you now, this would be a $99 purchase or you could do their subscription, but I don't know why you would. But it'd be a $99 purchase and then you would have it on Mac, iPad, and 
iPhone. So for me, I'm like, oh, I'll just edit on my iPad. I do that most of the time anyways. So it's not a big deal for me to not necessarily have it on Mac. Although if I really like it, maybe I'll go ahead and I'll just spend the money to up it to the Mac license. So, so far pretty happy. I think this is what I'm going to go with for now. But if you would like to see a demo of this, let me know down in the comments and I can do a demo of Photometer as well. And if you're interested in kind of learning the whole thing, I might be able to put a class together for you too. All right, we'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.